If you set up down here and you take your driver back, you're probably, in naturally, you would either bottom out here or you would bail out and top it. Take a couple of swings at knee height, then bring it down, bring it down, and then start skimming the turf. Okay, Craig, so I think one of the most misrepresented elements of the golf swing, where sometimes players would benefit from having a bit of a, an understanding of the differences between the clubs is swing plane, mm -hmm. right? And the effect of that shot of that ball being struck and the divot after, right? And the angle or the plane of that golf swing, which allowed for that to happen, it's going to be different to a driver, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, just the setup difference, this is a, this is a driver and this is a lob wedge. Mm. I mean, the difference in the distance, if my hands are in relatively the same position, now I've got 18 inches difference just between my lob wedge and my driver. Yeah. And then you combine that with the driver, it's about 57 degree lie angle. And then you have the lob wedge is like 64 degree lie angle. Now you have a seven degree difference in here. Yeah. So that's how between every club, if you have 14 clubs in your bag, you have a half degree change from your lob wedge to the driver, which gives you the full seven degrees for 14 clubs, <laughs> right? Yeah. So when someone has a short club in their hand, they're naturally, if they're setting up to it closer, they're naturally going to swing on a more vertical backswing. Mm -hmm. And on a driver, they're going to swing on a naturally more flatter backswing. And I think what happens is when people practice, they'll grab a seven iron and they'll hit a whole bucket of balls with a seven iron. Well, that's set somewhere closer to the wedge. Yeah. Then they kind of groove their takeaways and then they grab the driver and they swing it up like a seven iron and then they come chopping back down on it and they don't understand why an iron swing is different than a driver swing. Mm. I just explained why it's different. They're completely different clubs, length, lie, everything. Yeah. So you have to have a little different movement patterns for every club. They'll feel relatively similar, but they are distinctly different. Yeah, and I just want to expand on that a little bit and just kind of explain that when we say that they are different, that doesn't mean you need a different swing for every single one of your 13 right, clubs right. by the putter. If we were simplifying golf, and let's say we we're going to play from a horizontal plane and I have my arms out in front of me, the angle that, let's say, if you're instructed to hit this ball dead straight or flat with the ground, you would still swing this and this on relatively the same plane. Mm -hmm. You would still move around our body in a rounded fashion, relatively flat with the ground. Mm -hmm. But if I take that exact same movement, I go from here to here, right? And then I tilt down from the hips. What we'll notice is as I tilt down from the hips, my driver hits the ground well before my eight iron. Yeah. So then what happens is that would be my posture for a driver, ball position forward. But then if I continue going down for that eight iron to go down, it's very different. So therefore, the actual whole angle of the swing is going to be slightly different. But it's a subconscious reaction to getting set up correctly and also having your equipment fit, isn't it? Yeah, and that's the, that's the most important thing. Athletically, you want the freedom to have the similar feel. But you have to have the intellect to set up differently. Mm. And that's the, that's the trigger for me, is when somebody sets up the exact same way, so let's say they set up with their hands down here with the 60, and then they set up down here with the driver, <laughs> and they're, they're expecting to swing them the same way, yeah. they will replicate the exact same swing from that spot. One's mm. going to work, one's going to be horrible. So as long as you have the intellect to set up to a driver the way the driver is supposed to be set up to and the wedge the way the wedge is supposed to be set up to athletically the swings can feel the same but it's the decision to set up in the right spot that makes all the difference yeah so let's say players they are under the assumption they should set up exactly the same with the same amount of front bend with their shorter irons with their driver and like in reality most players are not going to do that but within reason they might find that they are too bent over with the driver and before they know it as a result of being too bent over now the shaft is pitching up and they're standing up to get out of the way so they don't hit it a mile behind now what would you say to them if they wanted to kind of work on this of how to find the right front bend and distance from the ball yeah yeah no it's a tricky one for a lot of people but let's say for example we pick the driver so I've just hit an entire bucket of seven irons and my body feels a certain way. Mm. If I didn't have a club and I had just hit a whole bucket of seven irons, I might set up and it would feel good. It would feel yeah. like I've been practicing. So what happens is then the player comes in and they're way more bent over, like you said, and they've got their driver in their hand this way. So what I like to do is make sure they're rehearsing, doing a lot of practice swings. Love it. Because if you set up down here 
and you take your driver back, you're probably, in naturally, you would either bottom out here or you would bail out and top it. So when you're coming in, I like to do what you did, take a couple of swings at knee height, then bring it down, bring it down, and then start skimming the turf. Amazing. So as somebody bends forward, they're only gonna bend just gradually till that club hits the ground, or like you demonstrated with your eight iron, where it's say I took a driver that was only you know, 40 inches long, mm. I would skim my driver down here, mm. just like if I had a long drive driver at 48 inches long, I would skim it over there. So I like to do the rehearsing, go from knee height, ankle height, down to the turf, and that helps me get in the right posture. Yeah, so let's let's talk about that, right? So let's say I'm a player, for whatever reason, uh, we've used the too far on your toes. Let's say I'm too far on my heels and my arms are extended away. Yeah. Now, even though this might not be as functional for an iron, well, believe it or not, this player might actually be better at hitting their driver just right. through the position that they're in. Mm -hmm. And we get players saying, oh, I'm good with my irons, but terrible with my driver, and I'm good with my driver, and so on and so forth, right? Yep, always, and yeah. sometimes it's just that you are setting up in such a way, which is maybe not conducive to making an efficient and consistent golf swing with every club. Mm -hmm. It's just accommodating for maybe the subtle differences of the driver yep. as, a, as opposed to the yeah, eight or the length. Mm -hmm. So what this drill does, and I really like that, is like you start off, or I can say around uh, belt buckle high, and have a couple of swings, just feeling like the golf club's coming through on a relatively level plane. Mm -hmm. Let's call it that, right? Yep. So yep. Relatively level, let's go belt, let's go knee. Sounds like we're doing a kid's nursery rhyme. Yeah. And then we're gonna go from here, we're gonna go down to ankles, right? Mm -hmm. And then we go down to the ground down here and brush the ground is always important when you're doing something like this, mm -hmm. because otherwise if you have a swing and you're up here and you go, yep, great, got it, <laughs> you top it, well, we just rehearsed a top. Yes, didn't you? Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. And, and when you're in, when you're faced with these situations, it's important to be able to navigate that. Because let's say, for example, you've hit a ball and it's rolled into the top of a fairway bunker. And like there was a hole at Industry Hills I played this shot on. It was a par five. It was a Monday qualifier. I knew I had to go for it. My ball had rolled to the top side of the bunker. Well, as a par five, I'm going to try to hit my fairway wood onto the green from there. But now I'm standing down inside mm. the bunker. So I've got my three wood at this height. Well, I've been a trick shot artist and I've been rehearsing this type of drill yeah. forever. So it didn't seem that difficult to me to be able to set the three wood up at this height ripped through it and I hit a great shot, knocked it on the green. It was amazing to everybody watching, but it was kind of normal to me because my motor and, and the movement of that motor doesn't have to be in exactly the same pitch, exactly the same posture every time. So if I've got a ball above my feet, no problem. If I got a ball way below my feet, no problem. I take my motor, tip it to the appropriate angle for whatever that shot is, and then the motor operates up top. So I'm my outcome isn't dictated by the situation I'm in. Yeah, and I think that's so important. We've often talked about in this series of videos that we've done together of the application of taking it from the range to the course. And if there's something that I think the majority of recreational golfers should pay attention to is how does this skill here transfer through a routine or through a rehearsal to something that they can apply onto the first hole. Right. So that exercise of simply going, okay, starting off and doing some baseball swings in itself, all things being equal, just from doing that exercise, right? you are going to be in a better position optimized for driver. Mm -hmm. If you're right. someone who's in an orientation mm -hmm. where your hands are going high and you're chopping down. So just little rehearsals like that, you'll see pros do this sort of thing all the time. Right. Right? How often do you see a little a pro do kind of like a bang of the grass and they're looking at the low point of where to strike it, but then most amateurs don't take a practice swing because they're scared of wasting a good one. Mm -hmm. So the clues are hidden with what the pros are doing, right? Totally. So when we're looking at this and like kind of putting it all together, right? So we've got an 89, we've gone through that little process of getting a, a bit of a feeling now of how much to bend down. I would also recommend that if you are doing this at home, just chuck it on film, your very first swing, and then after you've got yourself into this position without a ball of going, okay, if I get the feeling after what Craig and Kerrit have said of going from the belt line to the knees, the ankles and then onto the ground and I'm brushing the ground here and I return back to that point just take an image or a little video and then if you've got a previous video of your old setup kind of lay them over top of each other or right next to each other and just look at the subtleties and difference and I think building a visual for a lot of adults is incredibly mm -hmm. important because then they can see it and they can believe it 
because for a lot of players, they might feel like they're doing something, but in reality, it could be wildly different. Yeah. Hundred percent, and I take that visual to a player too. Mm. So when I was I played that um, the PGA at Beth Page, got to play nine holes with Adam Scott, and I just I got to see him up close in person, just roast drivers, right? Yeah. Well, when I'm watching him hit his driver, he's you know everybody knows his posture. They've watched it a million times. Well, sometimes in tournaments now, since I played with him, I'll go, all right, Adam Scott swing, Adam Scott swing. Yeah. So I'll yeah. just visualize his swing. Yeah. I'll set up to it. I'll feel like okay, I'm up tall up here. I'm like. Boom, there's my Adam Scott swing. Yeah. And Adam Scott swing, I love for the driver. Mm. But, like, let's say, for example, I'm going to hit, like, a low punch wedge. I'll think more like Lee Trevino. So I'll yeah. kind of be back Getting down into here it. and yeah, I'll yeah. kind of, like, hit that kind of shot. So, yeah. Love awesome. That. Well, I wouldn't mind being either of those guys. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's go through that last little rehearsal. Have a swing at belt line. Let's go at knees. Feeling like I'm getting a nice little whip. I'm not holding onto it. Ankles. Beautiful release, let's brush that ground and then I'm gonna walk in. It's perfect, let's go into it. Whatever that posture was, recreating that, let's hit the shot. Yeah, beautiful. Right in the right spot, shot off the face, love it. 